Calculations, Analysis, and Conclusion. To find the coefficient of friction, we will use a graphical approach. Our equation is friction is mu k times normal, and the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So here's our algebraic equation here, friction is mu k times normal. Let's compare it to the slope-intercept form. The friction would be on the y-axis, x would be the normal, and what would m equal? Looks like m is going to equal mu k. So we're going to plot friction on the y-axis and normal force on the x-axis. That means the slope must be the coefficient in kinetic friction. Notice there is no term comparing to the y-intercept b. Therefore, we can assume that the y-intercept is zero and our line should go through the origin. This is the data table that you should be using. We have the weight of the block, you measure with the spring scale, then our added weights go here, then total weight, which is just the weight of the block plus the added weight. Then we have the normal. Now, of course, this just equals mg, so we just copy over the column. And this over here, this is the measurement on the spring scale as we were pulling the block over the surface at a constant velocity. So we start with the 50 gram object, so the weight of that is 0.5 newtons. Then we will be adding 50 grams incrementally, or 0.5 newtons. We round the g to 10 meters per second squared. 9.8 of, of course is a lot more accurate and precise, but the way this experiment goes, this 10 isn't going to cost us much, so go ahead and use it. Go ahead and practice plotting the points from the data table. Plot friction on the y-axis and normal friction on the x-axis. So go ahead and back the video up and write down the chart. So take a few seconds to write this down. Pause the video if you'd like. And when you're ready, move on. OK, and here we are moving on. This is your graph. We've got the friction force on the y-axis, normal on the x. We've actually put the scale there for you. So please practice that. When you're ready, move to the next slide. And you can pause the video again to do the work. Here's what we get. And then draw your line of best fit. That's the next thing you want to practice. So you can pause the video again if you need to. And in this case, it'll be a straight line going through, through the origin, because this is our first data point. We're not pulling it with any force, so there's no friction. Everyone's line of best fit will be slightly different. Make sure you use a straight edge, like a ruler, and have as many dots above as you do have below your line of best fit. Now calculate the slope of the line. Well, you've got one point already down here you want to find another point that you can cleanly read it off the graph. So that's what's done with this red circle here. And circle it so your teacher knows which one you're choosing. And in this case, you have 2.4 for your x value, which is your normal, and you have 0.1 for the friction. Now notice, we never even got that data point, but that's on the line of best fit. And that's how you choose it. You don't have to choose your data points. Once you get the line of best fit, the data points are done for a while, and we're just going to work with the slope of that line. Our slope m is rise over run, or delta y over delta x. We put in the numbers we found from the previous graph. The slope is 0 0.042. Therefore, mu k is 0 0.042. You may have noticed that not all of the data points fell exactly on the line of best fit. That infers that there was some error in our data. The sources of error might include not pulling the object at a constant velocity. That's the key to the lab. The applied force equals the friction force when pulled with constant velocity. If the object is accelerating, these two forces are not equal. Or we pulled upwards with the spring scale. The spring scale should be kept as horizontal as possible. If it is pulled in an upward angle, then an additional upward component is added and the normal force will not be equal to the weight. Students might not be reading the spring scale correctly. Be sure that they understand the divisions on the spring scale and can read it properly and have them show that to you before they do the lab just to make sure. This is a preventable error. You shouldn't list that as a source of error on your report. When finding the coefficient of friction for multiple surfaces, it can be helpful to plot all the points on the same graph. 
be sure to keep points that go together with the same surfaces. One way of doing it, certainly, is just plot them in different colors. Another way you could use different shapes, like X's or little boxes or dots. Or you can just do one at a time and keep track of it, and then make sure you label each one with what surface and object you had. The object surface combination, represented by the green line, have the highest coefficient of friction. Why is that? Well, the coefficient of friction is the slope of the best fit line, and that one has the greatest slope. The surface object combination represented by the red line have the lowest coefficient of friction. And of course the blue is somewhere in between. When we added more weight to the object, and what was the weight equal to the normal force? What did we notice about the friction force? Well, as we were going in this direction, the friction force was also increasing. However, for a given set of surfaces, so either all the red, all the blue, or all the green, we have the same coefficient of friction for each one. As the normal force goes up, the friction force goes up, but the coefficient of friction stays constant. That's the slope of the line.